Hi, my name's Edward Mariani Squire and I'm the unit coordinator for Consumers, Firms and Markets. This unit is an introductory unit within the economics major. Its focus is a study of microeconomic analysis. It is predominantly driven by a theoretical apparatus known as neoclassicism. That may mean nothing to you right now, but by the end of this unit, you'll know exactly what it means. Before we go on, we should probably say something about what economics in general is. And we might as well start by having a quick look at what the textbook has to say on the matter. So here's your textbook, Microeconomics, by Parkin and Bade. And here's their definition of economics. Economics is the social science that studies the choices that individuals, businesses, governments and entire societies make as they cope with scarcity, the incentives that influence those choices and the institutional arrangements that coordinate them. So we can see here that um, Parkin and Bade argue, and this is, an uncon this is an unremarkable definition, they argue that economics is a science, that its primary focus is on the choices that individuals, businesses and governments make, or entire societies make as they cope with the problem of scarcity. The problem of scarcity here, in a nutshell, is that there is an insufficient quantity of resources to satisfy all of our collective and individual wants um, at no cost. It also looks at the incentives that can influence the choices that are made. So incentives here can be simply um, prices or factors that affect prices of goods and services, such as uh, taxes and subsidies and uh, various kinds of regulations which might inhibit or encourage certain behaviour or choices. And then there's the institutional arrangements which coordinate the choices that people make. And predominantly here, we're talking about a market institutional arrangement. That is, the buying and selling of goods and services um, freely um, facilitated by money. Of course, these institutional arrangements are not merely markets. They are also coordinated by various kinds of social norms or customs and also by the laws of the land that are given to us by governments. Since the 1930s at least, economics has been divided into two areas of study or two uh, levels of study if you like. One is called microeconomics and the other is called macroeconomics. This division was um, first put forward in the 1930s explicitly and the economist John Maynard Keynes in his 1936 book The General Theory of Employment, Interest and Money um, put forward this division explicitly. He says, the right dichotomy, I suggest, is, I suggest, between the theory of the individual industry or firm and of the rewards and the distribution between different uses of a given quantity of resources on the one hand and the theory of output and employment as a whole, on the other hand. So he makes this distinction between studying an individual industry or studying an individual firm 
and we may add to that, the study of the individual decisions of members of a household or individual consumers. We could also talk about individual workers or groups of workers within a particular industry. This would be microeconomics, studying the small the, at the micro level, as opposed to macroeconomics where we're studying the economy as a whole, where we're aggregating um, the behaviour of all the individual households. We're aggregating the behaviour of all the individual firms. We're aggregating the decisions of all the particular governments, federal, state and local, in order to understand how much in the economy is produced as a whole, how many people are employed as a whole, how many people are remain unemployed as a whole, what's the general level of prices for the economy as a whole. Are they going up? Are they going down? Is there inflation? Is there deflation? That's macroeconomics. Now for our unit, we're focused on the micro side. That is, the behaviour of individual consumers, individual firms, and their interaction within particular markets, independent of the economy as a whole. Now, this unit has a certain structure to it. It will develop uh, its topics in a certain ordered way so that each topic leads to another, so that overall we'll have a if you like, a unified theory for understanding microeconomic phenomena. That is, phenomena at the level of individuals, be it consumers or firms, and particular markets. What we're going to do is first start with consumer choice. We'll have a theory of consumer choice which will enable us to develop an understanding of the demand for particular good. Then we'll look at production costs of a firm and use that to come to an understanding of the behaviour of firms in competition with each other, which in turn enables us to construct the notion of supply in a market. So once we've come to a theoretical understanding of demand and supply, we can put them together to talk about the outcomes of a competitive market. And from there, we can talk about the welfare implications of a competitive market helps us to understand why economists are often big fans of competitive markets and they will often advocate policy prescriptions which try to make markets more competitive than they otherwise would be. However, we'll then go on to look at the case of market failures. This is where even if we have a competitive market, that market, uh, competitive market structure, it might be the case that markets could produce suboptimal or less than desirable outcomes. This might be because there are externalities, because of the need for public goods, or because of the existence of common goods. It's also entirely possible that a market, although it exists, is not a competitive one, or at least not as perfectly competitive as possible. So we can then examine the case of a monopoly market or a monopolistically competitive market and 
oligopolistic markets. These diverge in their outcomes, very often, from the competitive market. And finally, we'll look at incomes. We'll look at the determinants of incomes and we'll look at why inequalities in income may arise. This is the overall structure for our unit. Now, just as we've seen that this unit is actually a series of interconnected topics that result in an overarching theory, if you like, an overarching understanding of microeconomic phenomena. This unit is not a standalone unit within the economics major. In first year, the two economics units that you will do in your economics major are this one, consumers, firms and markets, and the other is the Australian macroeconomy. Already you can see here we've got a division between micro and macro. In second year, you'll do cost-benefit analysis, macroeconomic measures and models, and economic and financial modelling. And in third year, you'll do globalisation and sustainability, corporations, economic power and policy, and growth cycles and crises. Now, the first unit we're doing here provides you with some essential conceptual tools which are presupposed in cost-benefit analysis. So this unit is a preparation for second, the second year unit, cost-benefit analysis. Consumers, firms and markets also ties into globalization and sustainability. Globalization and sustainability is what we might think of as a political economy unit. So it's concerned with uh, both macro and micro economic issues and the ways in which governments play a role, a substantial role, in influencing economic outcomes. And consumers, firms and markets is also a necessary prerequisite or background to corporations' economic power and policy. This is a third year microeconomics unit which focuses on market structures and the impact that economic policies can have um, on those market structures and the various outcomes that can result. So you can see that this first unit is not a standalone unit. It's necessary for necessary background or a necessary foundation or starting point or an introduction to other units which are microeconomic units within the economics major. The final point that uh, I would make is that this uh, unit, in terms of the way you would study for it, is very heavily dependent on you reading the textbook and staying up to date with that. The textbook is, is rich in detail and explanation. And it's important that you read each relevant chapter of the textbook each week as preparation for the workshops that we will be conducting. The more you prepare, the easier and uh, more useful the workshops will be to you. So it's very important that you read those, the, the relevant chapters of the textbook. Also, with respect to the videos, it's um, that you should watch in preparation for your workshops. These videos that I will be doing will be hopefully relatively short, but they will presuppose that you've read the material in the textbook first. 
so they the the videos will kind of dive straight into something uh, to some theoretical model or some understanding of some concept um, presupposing that you're you've already have some basic understanding of it okay so uh, good luck with the unit and I'll see you in the workshop.